Hello everyone, welcome back to Tech Craft Studio and today I'm going to show you how to water cool your RAM. But first, you would ask why would I need to water cool my RAM? And most people will say it is not necessary and it is overkill and I would agree with that. But in my situation, I have four RAM sticks and I do run a Ryzen Threadripper for my main rig and I do have eight sticks of RAM and what happens is when I overclock them and they are right next to each other and since these are dual rank RAM sticks these do run pretty hot and there's not much airflow between the RAM sticks, so they do tend to overheat. And I noticed that when I hit about 50 degrees Celsius, I do run into stability issues. I do plan to upgrade my current rig to the 3970X, and I do want to get the most out of these RAM sticks. So I do plan to overclock these. And in order to do so, I do plan to water cool them and see how that goes. What I am hoping with this setup is I do plan to run them at least 3200 MHz. These are Samsung B die, 64 gigabyte kits, and I do have two of them. So what I do plan to do today is to remove the stock heat sinks, and I will be using the EKWB Monarch kit. I went ahead and I applied this kit to my first set just to see how things are doing. However, the twist today is I'm going to be using this thermal paste as you will see shortly in this video. What I have today is the iFixit toolkit thermal paste and a hairdryer to heat up the stock heat sink. So let's move this out of the way. The first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to be using this hair dryer to heat up the heat sink so the old thermal pads can be more loose. What I find is that when I try to take these apart without heating up the heat sink, they tend to stick to the RAM modules very tightly and I don't want to risk any damages to the RAM sticks. So be right back. I'll be using this. Okay, so I'll just let this sit for a few seconds, let the thermal pads heat up, and let the adhesive become more loose. And it's also pretty hot to touch, so I'll let this cool down for a few seconds. Okay, so the first thing you're gonna do is to use your fingers and just take off this plastic piece that's holding the heat sink together. It should pop right off just like that. And I'm gonna use these fin arrays here to just pry them apart. Okay, so in this case, if you need to, you can reheat this so it comes off easier. Okay, got this nice and toasty. Let's see if we can take this off.
Okay, now we have these off. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna clean up each of these RAM chips here so you have a clean surface to apply your thermal pad. I'm going to use a Q-tip so it's more precise and it does not leave any lint behind. And I'm going to use 91% alcohol, rubbing alcohol. So one thing to note is when you're applying this, make sure that you don't put this too far or too low because this will be showing as you put in your heat sink. And that is going to be aesthetically unpleasing to look at. Okay, so this is one of the most important parts of installing the water cooling block is you want to make sure this is aligned when you install it. So all of your RAM sticks need to be installed in the exact same position. Otherwise, if it's slightly misaligned, the water block will not be able to be installed properly. Now, if you don't have another side or a second side to your RAM stick, you may skip this step, but there should be a foam or a thicker thermal pad that you need to apply to your empty side. So the tension can be pushed from both sides when you're applying this heat sink. Okay, now that we have the thermal pads on this side, I'm gonna be installing the other half of the heatsink. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to be applying a thin layer of thermal paste here and here because I noticed that this piece does not directly contact the water block. So the water block installs on top of this heatsink. However, it's this piece that directly connects to it and this one doesn't. So what I'm hoping will happen is the thermal paste will allow better heat transfer from this plate to this plate, thus cooling this side of the RAM better. And this is going to be something I will be verifying through my testing once I have my system up and running. Okay, so that wraps up the first RAM stick. The first and also the last thing I want to mention is when you're using a thermal paste, if you do choose to use this method, is please be sure that it is not electrically conductive. You don't want to accidentally have some of the thermal paste get onto your RAM stick and cause a short and that would definitely ruin your day. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do a speed up through this footage and I'll see you at the end of the video.
and thank you for watching. If you like what you see today, please press the like button and don't forget to subscribe to this channel. And also, please don't forget to hit the notification button so you don't miss any of the content that I put out on a weekly basis. And I'll see you next week.